Welcome back to this video lecture where I will now be going over the process that I, I had uh, done to in order to create this texture that you see in front of you. Um, so what this style is called this is called hand painted uh, textures. So this is essentially paint or to just draw on um, you know materials just by simply painting it on as if you were drawing on a canvas, uh, it, which also includes drawing in some highlights, some uh, shadows, the detail. Um, now this is a little bit more of an advanced technique that typically um, you know, requires some more background in traditional drawing. Um, but what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my, my uh, pipeline here. and uh, But also the other ways you can texture this, you could go procedurally, uh, create the kind of cartoony look, or you could actually just go for the straight on realistic look with um, you know, by bringing in different wood grain materials, perhaps different metal materials or cloth material uh, for your asset as well. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, now, first thing I need to do is bring up my Substance Painter software. And once that's up, I want to start to load in the, um, the model that I have created. So in this case, I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to go select and I'm going to go to my, I think piano will be the best one for what we're doing here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, so this one looks pretty good. Um, the piano demo, demo had a little bit more, uh, you know, has some different kind of wrapping with uh, candles included, but we aren't going to go over the candles um, as that's not really necessary. So what what we have here is just our, our base mesh that we had modeled in Blender. And by now, I would assume that you guys have some kind of uh, understanding of texturing a substance painter. Um, you know, this course isn't really so much as how to texture. It's not the, the beginner course. Um, you know, of course, there are other other of those courses out there um, that you can follow if you feel like you need to. But just kind of more of a refresher in this case. Uh, what we want to do here is I'm going to, in a few different ways we can make textures. We can, of course, go in here and just throw in some flat colors um, perhaps I want to do something like you know, maybe make a kind of a wood grain brown um, and then I actually just duplicate this so this is just one way I can do it. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter brown and then I want to start to put in a black mask add in a fill layer and this fill layer I want to do some kind of a noise um, in this case you see we have a anisotropic noise, um, which is just kind of horizontal lines. And then I can blur that. I'm going to go to my filter, add a filter, and I want to do a blur slope. That might be a little bit, I'm not sure if I like that or not. Hmm. Maybe we'll move that blur slope and do a different kind of blur here. Let's see. I can do a directional blur. That might work. Not quite what I'm looking for yet. Let's just try, let's try a, a warp first. Hopefully this gives me a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of that kind of fuzziness to my grain. And then I'm going to from here, go with a blur. And so now I have kind of a wood grain look coming on here and I can come in and do different things with this. Um, you know, or you can also go as far as if you want to um, you know, just use some smart materials, you're welcome to do that. And I do want to caution you against using smart materials because you know, if you're in the industry, you're in, in uh, most people who are in the industry, they know what smart materials look like. And you aren't fooling anyone when you drop on a smart material and claim it your own. There's also a lot of errors with smart materials. As you see here, this wood grain does not follow the same direction. So that'd be something you have to fix. Um, you know, some of it looks just doesn't really look natural. Um, so these are all areas that you want to address if you do use a smart material. Uh, I myself don't like to use smart materials um, unless it's for like just a very basic or beginner thing. So for example, let's say if I were making, you know, wood grain here, I might go to a smart material and let's go with this walnut. And then I might just use this. Um, and then I'm going to come in here and start to maybe uh, change up a few things. I might change the base color if I want a different kind of look um so you definitely can 
take smart material you can adjust it as you find fit but i recommend highly against strictly relying on smart material for your materials um as it's a lot of times it's going to just look very generic okay so uh to to kind of show you how i how i create my materials which are hand paint textures i'm gonna go over uh three pieces here um and i might split up into two videos depending on how long this takes uh, i'm going to show you how i how i create the wood texture how i create the metal texture and the cloth texture and then from there, um, I, I will trust that you guys are able to take those concepts and apply it to your own model if you want to. So the thing about hand paint textures is you oftentimes will only want to use your base color um, as that's really all that matters. The lights in here should not affect you because you want to create this illusion of lighting without actual lighting until the very end. Um, and that'll just help kind of sell your colors. So what I would do first, I would first determine uh, what materials do I want. So I know I want most of this panel to be made of wood. I want parts of it such as, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just identify this. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a, a uh, you know, fill, fill layer that has just the color. I'm gonna make this out of wood. So let's go, a wood color we'll say there. I'm gonna call this uh, base. And then make a folder that I'm gonna call wood. And there you go. So I'm gonna put a black mask on this. Actually, I shall need to put, oh yeah, I'll put a black. Mm, no, I won't. Uh, so then we'll make another folder. I'm gonna call this metal. Oops. Uh, so now we have metal and I'm going to then add a fill layer into my metal. I'm gonna make this kind of a brassy looking color. So maybe something like that's fine. Maybe a little more orangey, there you go. Now this one I will add a black mask and I want to then come in to my polyfill tool and I want to go to my UV chunks or actually I'll just go to my mesh. I just want to select any of the mesh that I want to have this, this brass look. And I think that's really everything that I, I had, at least my concept, I had identified as needing that brass look. Um, but this is going to now help me identify where, you know, what's being painted. I can just, all the metal work will be done in this metal folder. All the woodwork will be done in this wood folder. And then we'll make another one, um, another folder. I'm going to call cloth. And I'm going to add a fill there to cloth. Then add that fill there. I'm just going to select a color. So in this case, I'm going with kind of a maroon. There you go. And I want to add a black mask there. And I just want to grab that. UV chunk. And actually this one has a little bit more than I want. So I'm going to come through here and um, turn off my, or change it to black. And I just need to just paint out these UV chunks I don't want. Um, so there you go. And now I'm gonna make one more piece that I'm gonna call uh, miscellaneous. So let me go ahead, or maybe I guess I don't really need to call it miscellaneous. It's not, I'm just gonna call this one keys. So this will be where all my keys go. Um, and my keys will be, let's make it white. So add black mask there. And then I want to select, nice thing about all these keys are linked. So I'm gonna select the keys. So I have all my keys selected. Um, I also might go ahead and just select this this uh what do you call it the music reel there um i'm gonna say keys and music there you go so now i have amassed out everything that i want and so anytime i'm working on the wood i want to be in the wood area anytime i'm working on the metal i'll be in the metal area you know and vice versa and this is going to really help me um keep things organized. So let's say if later on I'm coming through, I realize I made a mistake. I can easily, um, I can easily identify where my mistake was made and just go from there. Um, so, so next thing I want to do is start to gather together some references. I now know I need references for wood. I need references for metal. 
I need references for cloth and then for my keys as well. And this would be like an antique, uh, it's called player piano, which kind of plays itself. So now I'm gonna go to, uh, just go to Google search or you can go to ArtStation, you can go to particular websites or maybe you have something like this at home that you can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start searching stylized wood. And so something I, I like to use and I highly recommend is something called PeerRef. So what PeerRef is, it's a free, um, you know, reference board software uh, where you can just simply copy and paste a link. Uh, so let's say if I were to just find, oops, let me go ahead and, um, let's see, stylized metal texture. So let's say if I were to search up here, stylized metal texture, right? I'm looking for something that's kind of like a, a brass look, perhaps. Um, may, maybe I like some of these parts right here. So I'm going to just right click, copy it. I'm coming here, I'm going to paste it. And I can also just hit uh, Control V if I want. I'm going to bring it over here. And you can populate this whole entire board really quickly, um, you know, just by copy and pasting materials. Uh, let's see. Maybe stylize brass, I don't know. And so just coming in here and looking for a particular, um, you know, looking just for a particular kind of things, you're going to be able to quickly, hopefully quickly populate a reference board that you can then use. Um, now one other thing I recommend when you're making this reference board, so here's a nice brass texture I can use, or at least not as I use, but use as a reference. Um, you can also real quickly adjust the size. Let's see, I really don't need much of that. A little pit of metal. Pit of brass, let's see what this looks like. Um, or damaged brass. So that's actually pretty, pretty decent reference here. Um, so I'm just trying to populate this with some quality references. Now, one of the thing I recommend, you know, um, is separate them. So here I've separated and then I go to images. I go to normalize and I go by, uh, size. And so it's going to make them all roughly the same size. And then from there I can go to image or range and optimal and they'll arrange it in a nice compressed way. So I'm going to do the same thing over here for something that hasn't done yet. So right click on it, select them all, right click, image, normalize, and we'll go size. And you'll see now that shift size, they're all roughly about the same size. But right now you see this one's overlapping this one here. So I'm going to right click again, go to image, arrange, optimal. And now they're going to be arranged nicely. So one other thing I like to do is I like to use what's called notes. So for this, I'm going to right click and go to note. I'm just going to call this wood. And this will just kind of, I can just drag this over here. I can make another note. Um, note, and we'll say metal. And I can drag this over here. Uh, so, you know, for this, I, I do highly recommend making a reference board for, um, you know, any, any asset you ever texture, but usually anything you ever model, it's, it's always a good practice. Um, because, you know, in the end, when, especially if you're working for a company or for somebody, if they come back and fact check you or ask you, Hey, why, why is there, why is this silhouette look this way? By having a reference board, you're covering yourself and also you're guaranteeing that something's accurate. So for example, if right now I were to ask you to draw a horse, you know, of course you probably know what a horse looks like, but if you're to draw a horse, I can't imagine anybody would be able to draw an incredibly accurate horse just because it's not something you see every single day. And if you do see every single day, it's not something that you're going to, you're going to really um, remember every single, you know, twist and turn of a horse's foot, you know, whatever it may be. So having references is going to be a really good habit to get into. I highly recommend this ref board, um, you know, as it is a free software. It's often used across the industry. A lot of people use it. And it's really simple to learn uh, and really simple to, to use on fly. And it's also available on any, um, any operating system. So, uh, actually this, and that will kind of bring us to the end of this lecture. Um, the next lecture, I will have my reference board already made up, um, you know, for the reference, for the lecture to begin. And then we are going to go straight into, uh, creating the stylized wood texture. 
um, you know, the hand painted wood texture then. So I'll see you guys in the next lecture.